JM in the AM. It's America's one and only Jewish Moments in the Morning Radio program heard on listeners sponsored WFMU East Orange, WMFU Mount Hope, Rockland County at 91.9 on the FM dial, and around the world on the web, JM in the AM.org. <laughs>
JM in the AM with Nachamu on this Erev Shabbos Nachamu done by Aspak Laria off of their Kuma CD. And we say welcome to a JM in the AM Friday morning. I want to thank Stan in our studio. He kept the music rolling as we were preparing for our show here in Stay Road. And I, uh, I welcome all of you to this uh, very special Friday morning broadcast. It's special because, number one, we're in Stay Road. And uh, I know a lot of people think that's a great accomplishment. I don't know if I think it's a great accomplishment, but I think it's an amazing opportunity to show love and solidarity for our brothers and sisters who are in a difficult, uh, um, a difficult situation this summer here in Israel. Uh, as we record this show, it's about 3 o'clock in the morning in the United States in the Eastern Time Zone, so we don't have the latest, latest news, but we do know that there are some rockets flying toward Ashkelon and uh, other areas of this region and uh, we pray for the safety of our brothers and sisters, of course, and continue to pray for the uh, amazing um, personnel of the Israel Defense Forces. I um, want to thank everybody here at Stay Road who have uh, opened up their, um, uh, their wonderful uh, community to us this morning. And uh, the second reason we're here, in addition to that very important reason of, reason of showing solidarity and being in this area of Israel, the second reason we're here is because for months, and I mean that literally, for months, an amazing group of people that I'm privileged to be part of uh, have been planning a Hachnasa Sefer Torah, a big Sefer Torah celebration in the Ethiopian synagogue in the city of Steyrot. And uh, we were involved because months ago, Yassi Baumel happened to ask me, about the possibility of finding somebody to donate a Sefer Torah, one that was desperately needed in the Ethiopian synagogue. And as I have pointed out many times in the last few weeks, the team of uh, Simon and Dr. Joe from West Orange, New Jersey, came through immediately. And we said that uh, unlike uh, a lot of situations where you see the celebration, Achnas the Sefer Torah first, and then the Torah actually that day or shortly after be uh, presented, uh, to the synagogue. In this case, uh, Simon insisted that the Torah be delivered to the synagogue immediately and that we would plan on coming for the big celebration at some point. We didn't realize that it would be the summer of 2014 uh, when a trip to Israel and, of course, to stay road would be so meaningful to people here. And today is the day we celebrate. Uh, today, uh, Simon Jacob and Dr. Joe Rosazada and uh, members of their families and myself and Rabbi Sharbat from West Orange, New Jersey, uh, Rabbi Siegel from Staten Island and so many uh, uh, wonderful people who are joining us are all going to be celebrating a couple of hours from now right after this radio broadcast in that beautiful Hachnasa Sefer Torah celebration in the Ethiopian synagogue. There's a lot to say about that. There's a lot to say about Stay Road. Yossi Baumel has promised us some amazing guests for this hour, so stay tuned. Rabbi Yudin, of course, is going to speak to us in hour number three. And uh, today is one of those rare Fridays where we, we will not conduct a weekly update. We're not going to be speaking with Malcolm Honline today, uh, but that will return next week. Today we are dedicating our show uh, to this amazing visit to the city of Steyrot, and we'll talk more about Steyrot and more about this Safer Torah celebration coming up right here at JM in the AM. A big thank you to PC Guy, who's leading our engineering team here in Israel, doing an amazing job. We continue to recommend his website as probably the best way to get in touch with him for services both in Israel and around the world. I've mentioned many times how he's uh, amazing in fixing computers that are thousands of miles away from him. Go to thepcguy.co.il, thepcguy.co.il. I want to thank um, uh, our friends at the Inbal Hotel, whose hospitality has been amazing. Uh, they continue to be an amazing sponsor of ours and our journeys to Israel. And we may have some very special things going on with the Inbal at the beginning of next week. When you tune in Monday morning for our show from Jerusalem, you have no idea, nor do I at the moment, uh, know where we're going to be broadcasting from, but I think the Inbal is going to be playing a very big role in that. And, of course, Tuesday will be with Nefesh Benefesh. A big thank you to Miriam L. Wallach, general manager of the Nachum Siegel Network, who brilliantly has pieced together this trip. She and I yesterday had a, a journey of a lifetime as we were, um, I think, even closer to Gaza than we are now. Uh, we were in, uh, we were in, oh, gosh. Do you want me to help? Yeah. Kfar Aza? No, but what was the other Kfar one? Maimon. Kfar Maimon. We were in Kfar, Kfar Maimon. Maimon. In Kfar Maimon and in Kfar Aza. Right. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? And Baruch Hashem, I'm Good. doing fine. Excellent. And <laughs> among the people that we met just a few hundred yards away from the Gaza Strip were soldiers from the United States of America, including one from Livingston, New Jersey. That was 
It was unbelievable meeting him. Mm. Uh, first name was Gabi, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, last name Choma. Yeah. Are we allowed to release that information? Well, we did already. Is that confidential? <laughs> Is the IDF going to come after us now? I don't know. I got a big picture of him. I think it's on That's Facebook <laughs> with his flak jack that says. Uh, Where are the pictures? Are they on uh, I the am Single Network page? I am presently trying to upload them literally as we speak. All right. Check them out, folks. We had an amazing day. Uh, we should give credit to Uriel Nachum. Correct. From Kfar My family mom. name is Nachum. Right. Let's not confuse. We have a picture of me in front of the Nahum sign in front of their house, which is pretty funny. Right. Um, they, uh, he was one of the most remarkable people we've ever met. When the soldiers started coming down to that area and the staging area for Gaza began to form around the town of uh, Kfar Maimon, he and an amazing group of volunteers, mostly led by the women of the community, started cooking meals, started collecting shampoo and underwear and everything they needed. You need. name it. Everything's there. We have photos that you'll see. Uh, th they started shuttling <laughs> soldiers from the base to homes to shower. They formed a WhatsApp group. They formed a WhatsApp group that had over 50,000 messages. Right. So people can be up to date on what services are being provided by this. And this was all volunteer. The Army never Correct. expected any of this. And Uriel said that he has basically not gone to work in right. four weeks. He, he took off a month from work. Right, basically. He has dedicated himself to this mission. And after... A remarkable, remarkable afternoon, which it really was. And Nachum, um, we both agreed that we, we spent our day with Jewish heroes. We started with Rabbi Fass in the morning, That's right. you know, s s single-handedly, and with uh, with Tony Gelbart, obviously, and his team at Nefesh Ben Nefesh. They are bringing all these olim, and we look forward to next week. And then we finish the day with 22-year-olds, 19-year-olds, who are literally on the front lines and thanking us for visiting them, which was right. completely remarkable. We, we saw a 22-year-old soldier, I think he was actually a commander, Yehoshua, who asked me what my 22-year-old does in New York. Right. Oopsie daisies. That was a tough, that was a tough <laughs> conversation. But it, it was really amazing. But it was quite remarkable when we met Gabi Choma and... Um, and all of a sudden, we were sitting in that car in Kfar Aza, and we're talking to the Chayalim through the window, and all of a sudden, that perfect English comes I out. Know. And you said, I am Nachum Siegel. And five minutes later, he's like, can I take a picture from my mom? <laughs> and out cool. came his <laughs> And it turns camera. out that both Simon and Dr. Joe know the Choma family. Oh, from really? East in New Jersey. Of course so they do. Of course is right. Of course. All right, guests from Stay Road and plenty more coming up. It's a very special Friday morning. Erev Shabbat Nachamu here at JM in the AM. I believe candle lighting in the New York area is 743. 743 on this Erev Shabbos Parshas Ve'eschanon, Erev Shabbos Nachamu. 743 is candle lighting time. We are going to conduct this JM in the AM radio program, a unique one for a Friday, a little bit different than usual. No weekly update this week. And then we're going to proceed to the Ethiopian synagogue where we are going to participate in the Hachnasa Sefer Torah, a very, very special Torah, which we will describe with some very special guests coming up. Keep it here on this era of Shabbos Nachamu at JM in the AM. <laughs> Nahamun, 
J.M. in the A.M. with Arye Kunzler on this Arab Shabbos Nachamu. Before that, a group called Shamayim, who I believe are based up in Spot with their version of Nachamu Ami. Hey, this is the day to play some Arab Shabbos Nachamu music. It's, in fact, Arab Shabbos Nachamu, and we're spending it in State Road. Uh, doing a radio show and then uh, participating in the big Hachnasa Sefer Torah that we've been anticipating for months. We'll give you details about that coming up. Moshe Schwartz is here. Anything but a typical Passaic, New Jersey youngster. Uh, Moshe Schwartz, welcome to JM in the AM. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You ever hear of this show before? Yeah, you know. <laughs> they listen and stay road, huh? <laughs> so give me the uh, give me the lowdown. You go to elementary school in New Jersey, I assume. Yeah, and I then? Uh, and then I went to I started off in uh, YZY, a uh, small yeshiva in Mansi. I All went right. there for two years, and then I switched into MCA. I finished off high school. I uh, then went on to Yeshiva Yisrael Torah, learned there my Shana Aleph, and then a little bit into my Shana Bet, I switched into Sterot. Right, and. Uh, had you been find out about Stay Road? Had you, had you visited here during Shana Allah? Well, you know, I, I, I went for one Shabbos, you know, to check out. Just like, you know, you know Stay Road sounds like a cool place to visit. And uh, when I got here, you know, I saw the yeshiva, uh, and I was very impressed. You know, the very serious people here. Um, the, 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 I feel the yeshiva almost, it's like a prototype for yeshivas in Israel, to a certain extent, the way that it interacts with the community. We're not just a yeshiva that is located in Stay Road. We are the yeshiva of Stay Road. And I thought that was something very special, something I wanted to be a part of. There are no other American students, American meaning American students whose parents are still in the United States, in Stay Road at this time, correct? There are, they are not, You're no. the only one. Yeah. Does that make it, I don't know, difficult for you? It's not a big deal? How would you describe it? I mean, in the beginning, it was pretty rough. I mean, when I got there, you know, people were like, you know, how are you? What's your name? And I had no idea it was flying. I, I didn't know any <laughs> Hebrew. But, um, you know, you battle through it, you work through it, and then, you know, it's very gratifying now to be where I am that I, you know, more or less, I understand what's going on. Are people in New Jersey concerned for your safety? Well, yeah, you know, people in New Jersey, they hear of steroid and they think, oh, so you're learning in Gaza. That's what's going on, <laughs> you know. But, um, no, I mean, the yeshiva, you know, obviously you have to be very careful. You know, when you hear a seven dome, you go to a shelter. And in addition to that, you know, we have, like, you know, the Star Wars great weaponry in the Iron Dome. And, you know, we have a great army. We also learn here. We feel that, you know, that helps the, the situation. And, you know, Baruch Hashem, you know, in the last round of fighting, I don't think there are any um, uh, fatili fatilities uh, in steroids. Uh, how many soldiers have passed through here over the last month? Oh, it's been great. There have been a lot. I mean, it started off with uh, maybe around 100 that came in, and, uh, and then just more came. I think one, the Friday morning, just a few weeks ago, it was like, you know, four or 500, you know, soldiers just came in. And uh, it was great. We had Shabbos with them, and it was just, it was really, you know, probably the best Shabbos I've ever had in my life. It was a very amazing experience. Moshe Schwartz is here from Passaic, New Jersey, uh, now in Stay Road. Uh, did the yeshiva students have a role in helping the soldiers? Were there stuff that you were doing as a volunteer or well, any way helping them? Well, absolutely. I mean, you know, we were sharing dorms with them. Um, you know, they were very, I think, grateful for the fact that, you know, how, you know, warm and welcome we are. I mean, one soldier mentioned that uh, there's a certain feeling you get when you go home and you see your family and you see your parents, and he said he felt that when he came to our yeshiva. This is a Chiloni soldier. Uh, and, you know, it's very special to feel that you're in a position where you're able to actually, you know, like make a difference to a certain extent. These are people who have been in Gaza and were returning for Shabbos or people who are on their way out to Gaza. I mean, you just feel, you know, life is more real in Stay Road. Uh, is this the beginning of an American program in the yeshiva in Stay Road? Are you going to be the first of what will be hundreds of students whose parents and families are back in the United States, but they're coming to study here? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, we were actually trying to start an American program. It's sort of hard to pull Americans to stir up by virtue of, you know, its reputation of being, you know, kind of in Gaza, as people would consider it from America. But it's really an amazing place. And, you know, the people here are really excited to meet Americans, to see Americans, to see Americans in the yeshiva. They've been extraordinarily welcoming to me. If there's anyone out there who's interested in learning steroids, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity. Are you going to remain here through the rest of the summer and then, uh, you know, for even more than that? Yeah, I plan on drafting a Mishra with the uh, yeshiva this coming March draft. Um, uh, so I'll be in the so I'll be in the yeshiva till March, and then I'll be drafting into the army. Right, with the, with boys the, your age. I yeah, think. with the guys in my shir. Wow, unbelievable. Well, call a kavod to you. A pleasure meeting you. <laughs> what message should we give back to the people in New Jersey? You know, I mean, it's uh, you know, it wasn't easy for me, you know, coming into Stay Road, but uh, you know, there are easier paths to coming here. You know, I mean, people talk about, you know, is it uh, Chiyav to make Aliyah, is it Rishus to make Aliyah? At the end of the day, I mean, you know, our entire story of our history have been getting to Israel and getting kicked out of Israel. I mean, at this point, it's time to get back. Kolakavod. Thank you so much.
Amazing. Moshe Schwartz, one of the prides of the Garden State from Passaic, New Jersey. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much. Kol HaKavod. And enjoy your Shabbos Nachamu and stay road. Uh, we're here today because we have a uh, wonderful Safer Torah celebration coming up right after we finish this radio show. And we'll give you details about that coming up here at JMDM. I do want to remind everybody that the uh, Tarot Koanim uh, Division and the One Israel Fund have a unity concert that's uh, taking place tomorrow night in upstate New York. And I hope everybody uh, goes and enjoys uh, whenever an event is, um, uh, is planned and is designated as one that's a unity event for Israel. It's so important, even if it's a musical event, to make sure it's well attended. It's happening tomorrow night at 11 p.m. up at the Master Gym on Mall Road in Barryville, New York. It stars God Elbaz and Eighth Day and a whole bunch of other performers. And uh, for information, you can contact the Tarot Koanim or the One Israel Fund. Let's make sure that it's going to be well attended and, uh, and um, a great success. Yossi Baumel, why don't you join me here for a moment. Yossi Baumel was with us Monday at JM in the AM. And uh, it was that day that we were sitting and talking about this very day here in Stay Road. And you're going to introduce us to a couple of uh, special guests in just a moment. Um, nice to see you here on this side of the world, Yossi Baumel. N- n- nice to see you on this side of the world. Tadaraba. Good to be here, to say the least. I don't understand something. And I'm not making light of what's going on, especially today, because we know that uh, in Ashkelon there's uh, things happening, etc. But uh, ever since we landed here, we seem to be in a, uh, I don't know, much more calm environment than the one we were in a couple of weeks ago. Would you say that that, that, that would be a good description of the situation now in Israel? Uh, Nachum, I tried to explain this to you on the radio, and in all of my talks in the United States. In America, everybody's worried. Over here, despite the terrible losses that we suffered, the spirit of the people here is so strong and so optimistic, and hopefully we will lead our leaders in the same path. Uh, we know that Leif Sarim Be'ad Hashem, so we can't judge our leaders because God's running the show as far as that goes. But each of us can make a difference by being calm, by going about our lives and doing what has to be done. And Baruch Hashem, that's what the people here do, do, and stay are doing today, but they would have been doing it for weeks already. Right. So even those who are following, and there are a lot of people in the United States and listeners of ours who follow the Red Alert apps, and when they see, you know, Ashkelon, for instance, dominating the morning news, etc., they may get the feeling that, I don't know, Israel's under fire. They have to realize that it's, it's, it's not like that, that, you know, we're not minimizing what people in Ashkelon and other areas go through, but it's not, that's not the way to look at it if you're uh, trying to figure out what's happening in Israel. You have to understand it's not a personal thing. The danger to any specific individual is infinitesimal. Correct. But the entire country follows the rules not to let them to have the pleasure thereof of a victory over us, even by killing one Jew. That's why we all do these things, and that's the spirit that we have here. But nevertheless, we, are, we, we, we have to understand as far as the state of Israel goes, no country in the world would take even a half a missile shot at them. And here we are, and as I told them this morning, what I think Israel's reaction would be that the first stage we wouldn't react at all to give a chance for them to calm down once again. This is the situation, but the people are strong. That's the greatest message of the last two months, is that the Am Yisrael Chai, the people are really strong. And not that we would ever make any recommendations to people, but if people are planning on coming to Israel and are planning on spending some time here in August, uh, all we could do is encourage them. Keep those plans Absolutely. in place. Absolutely. A lot of people are contacting there. me. I told my wife already it's not going to be one day vacation this summer because there are groups coming all the time. We have people coming. To, we have two groups tomorrow at the same time. Tomorrow, we have other people coming throughout the week. We have a lot of groups planning to come towards the end of August. There is just a lot of people who want to come and to get a little taste of the spirit that I'm talking about here in Israel. All right, help us introduce our next guest. Who do we have? Is it Orna Cohen who's going to oh, be joining one us? One second. I, these guys have to travel to the, ah, to the Galil. And, this and is where's your cake holding, Orna? It's out. It's okay. So you have another five minutes. Okay, great. So we're going to have introduced to you Yehuda and Benjamin Leibler. All right, let's sit them down. Their and parents, Rami and uh, Papsi Leibler, live in Harnof. They were honored at our dinner as Parents of the Year. They I are, remember them. Yeah, they're not uh, Americans. They're Israelis. His mother, their mother, actually was Naftali Bennett's babysitter. Uh, when he was a little boy. I think you mentioned so that. So they the share dinner. a very important uh, quality with the leaders of our country, uh, but they're the future's leader of our country. In any case, let them talk instead of me. Okay? All right, so Yehuda and Benjamin Leibler are here, and uh, let's just turn that around. Let's put the microphone on the left side. Uh, which one's Yehuda? Shalom and Boker Tov to you. Well, you got it? There we go. Shalom and Boker Tov to you too. I see your English is not so bad. Thanks very much. Binyamin, welcome to you as well. Hey, good morning. Shalom, shalom. shalom. Uh, so tell me about your, who's older, by the way? 
The one who looks older. The one who looks older. <laughs> Thanks so, very so, much. So tell, me, tell me about your progression. I mean, uh, how, did, how did you end up in Yeshiva and stay road? Well, uh, first of all, uh, Benny and I were both uh, born and raised in uh, Jerusalem. Right. We two out of uh, seven brothers. Um, I came here at the uh, end of high school, uh, 12th grade. I was uh, looking for yeshiva, for a yeshiva to go to. My friend just suggested one day, let's go down to Zderot. And I said, yeah, okay, whatever. And I came here and I decided to stay here. What is it that attracted you to here? The Limud. The amazing power of uh, Torah learning here. That uh, The moment I, I opened the um, heavy uh, rocket-proof uh, glass doors on the front of the Beit Midrash. And it was in the middle, in the middle of the... Uh, afternoon seder and I opened the door and it was just this boom of, uh, of a noise of, uh, of limud and it was powerful I've been to other uh, to s several of the yeshivot and that was powerful I decided to stay here and that sound can drown out the rocket fire yes it does it does drown it, it out. does my wife calls me sometimes and says are you okay we had uh, there was just a uh, there was just a uh, tseva adom and I said I didn't hear anything my mother sometimes calls and said are you okay the, the news just reported the tseva adom like tseva adom you had no idea. And when did you get here? Uh, I came here this year. Uh, same thing after 12th grade. I came here about the same reasons. I checked a few places and I came here because I, the Rabbanim really inspired me. Um, from the Rabbanim, the serious uh, limud and the also the purpose over here is really the 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 dagesh that they give you is about the achdut, the union in Am Yisrael. It, you have Haredi Rabbanim, you have Dati Rabbanim, it's all in, from inside Torah. That's what uh, really inspired me. I know the yeshiva is always reaching out to other parts of the community. You as students feel that in the yeshiva? Of course. Yes. And people come in and they're from other parts of the community and they study Torah there? I'll tell you, I noticed this, I noticed this, uh, this phenomenon even before I entered the yeshiva. When my friend and I came in the 12th grade, we didn't know the way to the yeshiva. And we ended up on the completely uh, on the outskirts of Sderot. And we asked people, and we just asked someone uh, already, do you know where the yeshiva is? Of course, go that direction. So we went, we went in the direction it was pointing. We found another guy, you know where the yeshiva? Everyone we met, and we were completely, uh, it's embarrassing, we were completely on the other side of town, <laughs> but everyone we met along no, the way knew exactly where the yeshiva is. And this is something that the, the mayor of the town once told uh, Rav Fendel. Uh, um, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Alon Davidi, he said right. to Rafendel, there are many cities in Israel uh, with, uh, with, a yeshiva, with a Hesdel Yeshiva in them. This is a Hesdel Yeshiva with a city around it. Amazing. I love it. Uh, what about army service? Is that something you've done already? Yes. Uh, this is a Hesdel program. I'm in my fifth year now. It's a five-year program where we do a year and a half uh, studies in the Yeshiva, another year and a half in the army, and then another two years in the Yeshiva. Uh, I served in the paratroopers. Um, I, uh, I was uh, released uh, two years ago. Um, it's basically. Uh, do you still have to do miluim and? Uh, yeah, of course. Um, anything, that, any, anything over the last month, or this was not your role? Um, well, uh, my wife, happily for my wife, and yeah, okay, for me too. Uh, I wasn't called up. Um, we were, we got you married. You sound a little disappointed. Frankly. Yes, I was a little disappointed. We're very gung ho over here, but. Um, yeah, sure. I, I, I got married eight days before this whole thing broke out. Wow, that's all tough to here. you. Thanks very much. We moved down here exactly um, at the end of the Sheva Bochot, and exactly the day after we came here, you know, it was quiet. Suddenly there was a fireworks display from Gaza, and, uh, you know, um, so uh, my wife really needed me by her side, and uh, I, uh, so I'm happy to do that, but sure. Some, so some people this. would say you lucked out. You wouldn't use that expression. <laughs> no, not in this lifetime, no. Amazing, absolutely amazing. And Benjamin, your schedule with the army? Um, I have, a, I think, half a year, or maybe I'll do another year in Yeshiva. Wow, unbelievable. Kol to both of you. A pleasure meeting you. Thanks very much. Uh, we have Yehuda and Benjamin uh, Leibler yep. uh, from Yerushalayim, now studying in Steyrot. And we wish Mazal Tov to Yehuda and his wife. And uh, this is a perfect example of the amazing youth that you will find uh, not just in Israel, but in this area of Israel, who are ready to serve at a moment's notice and are disappointed when they're not able to, which is pretty incredible. More coming up here at JM in the AM as we uh, uh, continue on this Friday morning broadcast. As we've been reminding everybody, we are here not only to show solidarity with Stay Road and to be here with um, 
uh, this incredible uh, uh, group of people on this uh, Erev Shabbat Nachamu. Uh, but there is a, uh, an amazing and incredible Hachnasa Sefer Torah that's going to be happening later today. And uh, that Hachnasa Sefer Torah is going to be happening at the uh, Ethiopian synagogue here in Stay Road. And why are we part of it? We will explain all of that coming up if you keep it right here at JM in the AM.
Shlomo Katz. Friday morning, Erev Shabbos, candle lighting at 743 in the New Jersey, New York area on this Erev Shabbos. Parshas Ve'eschan on Erev Shabbos Nachamu. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for a very special Friday morning. Uh, by the way, um, and we will talk in a moment, uh, in a couple of moments, about the Hachnas uh, Sefer Torah that's going on here and the background behind it, in addition to uh, Simon Jacob and Dr. Joe Rosazada, uh, who are here, Rabbi Sharbat, who is the rabbi of the uh, Sephardic Minion, would that be the right way of saying it? The Sephardic Minion, the congregation of Asachim and A. Jacob and David of West Orange, New Jersey. He is here. It's a tremendous kavod, a tremendous honor for us to have him here. And uh, Rabbi Chaim Nassan Nate Siegel, who is uh, the rabbi of the New Springville Jewish Center in Staten Island for 30 years and has been uh, one of my uh, greatest advocates for the last 30 years. He is in Stay Wrote with us today, and he is going to be uh, joining us as well with Athnas to Sefer Torah. So it's great to have great rabbinic leaders here participating with us. It lends uh, an even more uh, authentic atmosphere to this incredible day and this amazing celebration. Orna Cohen is here. Uh, she is a resident of Stay Wrote, but I guess for us what makes her unique or what makes her story really cool is that she's from South Bend, Indiana. Welcome, you Midwesterner, to JM in the AM. Not too much left of the Midwest by me. No? <laughs> you sound very Israeli for somebody from South Bend. <laughs> How'd I, that happen? I haven't been in South Bend for 39 years. My gosh. How long ago did you move to Israel? Uh, I moved to Israel in, at the end of high school. Right. And came back to South Bend for one visit since then, and uh, since then I've lived here, got married. Was that Hashem. unusual for a high schooler to make a decision like that, to go to uh, Israel at I, that time? I must say that from my peer group, my age group, there's a great, great number of people who made Aliyah. Here in Israel from South Bend, right. from my age group, it's amazing. That is pretty All amazing. All over. Uh, you moved directly where in Israel? Where was your first Jerusalem. Time? Right. And then we lived in Arad, we lived in Beit El. And then we, seven years, this week, we're going to celebrate seven years to moving to Stero. So you're a real chalutza. I mean, you, you were in places that uh, I assume were all building when you got there, right? In places like Arad and others. Arad was a small town at the time. It's much, deve it's developed right. very much since then. But um, it was, Arad was always a nice town. It was a beautifully planned town. How different is Stero today than seven years ago? Because I see a tremendous amount of construction going on and just uh, so much growth happening. Um, Sterot has grown. Sterot, uh, when we came, when we when we came to Sterot, there was time. There was a lot, there were a lot of attacks on Sterot, so a lot of people left at the time. And it was it wasn't a ghost town, but it wasn't fully populated. And it's amazed because there's been so much building done in the last two years. Sterot has grown. There, there's a great demand for apartments for young couples. Very, very, very many young couples have come to make Sterot their home. Um, I think that the education has grown a lot. There are very many more nursery schools than there were when we came. Um, but, you know, we we have to remember that the, there were people in Sderotli down the street from me. There's someone who said uh, that 52 years ago he got married in the house that he lives in right now. <laughs> so that's also part of the Sderotli population. And these old timers have been holding on steadily for a long time, and they're a very important part of the population. Arna Cohen is here from South Bend, Indiana, but in Stay Road for the last seven years and in many other places in Israel for many years before that. Everything you just described, and yet we're here uh, where a few seconds ago a red alert, mm -hmm. Seva Adom went off. Do you ever get used to it? We're in the middle of it right now. How would you describe it to people who are listening? First of all, it doesn't um, contradict what I said before. Ki ka'asher ya'neoto ken yobev ken yifotz. Hashem has a special agreement with Am Yisrael that putting pressure on Am Yisrael makes us grow and develop and bring out the best in us. And I think that's true about Zderot also. Um, for people who have a, a good level of coping, people who are physically okay and emotionally okay, it's, you can manage. It's not pleasant. It's not normal. I sometimes I think that the emotional aspect is worse in, in, the truth is the emotional aspect is much worse than the actual danger because the tension that Dadom, that the red alert can cause or the anticipation to t red alert or the panic or trying to run f because of the red alert is much, much more danger, dangerous than the danger of being hit. So the most important thing is to do everything you can to stay calm. 
it is a problem when you're dealing with the weaker parts of the population. Weaker parts of the population includes little children because right. you really can't go outside to any distance with little children in this situation. Um, my grandchildren haven't visited here for a month, except for one family that came in the middle of the week to meet their father who was released from the fighting in Aza for 24 hours. They came to us to stay and had spend maximum time with him, and they stayed home the whole time in our home. Um, people, for example, I know a handicapped lady who didn't leave her house for two months. The, she didn't go through over the st threshold of her house for two months. Um, and for you, it's not just this month. It happens many other times as well, right? It's not, it's not as bad as it sounds on the media. It's not as often as everyone thinks. Steroid isn't such a, an object for our enemies today. It's much more interesting for them to make people in Tel Aviv or in, Stero uh, in uh, Ashkelon or in Ashdod or Be'er Sheva feel uptight. And steroid is, is pra <laughs> well practiced. We, people in steroid have learned how to cope. And also, we have more protection here than many other places. We have the bus steps that are sheltered. We have shelters, and we even have a, a playground that has a shelter. Not that I really think that that's a way of life. The way of life is to show that we, that Eretz Yisrael belongs to us, and our enemies have to realize that also. Well, Kala Kavod, I thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for, uh, on behalf of all of us, thank you to Stay Road for uh, all your hospitality and uh, continued uh, success here in the city of Stay Road. Well, my best wishes to all my brethren in America. And if you really care about Israel, come and influence. Come here and you can take a part. It's a democracy. You'll vote. You'll be a part of the whole, this beautiful, beautiful picture here and put your, your, your word in also in your life. All my best. Shabbat Shalom. Tadarabha. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, point well taken, as they say. Um, Orna Cohen, thank you. Made a point that all of us should certainly remember. Uh, we have the influence. We have the capability of having even more influence, and hopefully soon everyone will take advantage of that uh, possibility. Uh, I'm asking Dr. Joe Rosazada, who is um, uh, with us here today, to join me. He has a special guest from the city of Nair Tzvi. Um, where, where are our special guests, Dr. Joe Rosazada, and a special mystery guest from the city of Neret Svi. Uh, good morning, Dr. Joe. Boker Tov. Boker, Boker tov. tov, Sadiq. How are you? Sadiq. Sadiq Ata. Sounds like, sounds like a drastic uh, description, frankly. Nah, chas v'shalom. Um, Dr. Joe Rosazada is part of the uh, amazing committee of, uh, of Simon and Dr. Joe of West Orange, New Jersey. We are getting ready for the Big Safer Torah celebration. We'll talk more about it in a few minutes. But you have a special guest. Amichai Zeltzer is here with us today. Amichai Shalom. Shalom. Nice to meet you. Where is Neir Tzvi? It's uh, right between uh, Tel Aviv and Yerushalayim. Oh, wow. It's I probably long. passed it a thousand times and don't even realize it. Probably. How many years are you living in Israel? Since I was born. Your whole life. Yeah. How did you meet Dr. Rosa Zada? Oh, that's a wonderful <laughs> story. <laughs> there's, no one, there's no one who can cross around uh, Dr. Rosa Zada and not meet him and, you know, get to know this, uh, this amazing person. And you met in New Jersey, correct? Yeah, right. in Shul. In Shul. Joe and is hosting anyone, who's <laughs> anyone who has a place and doesn't have a place to stay around Shul. He has an open house? <laughs> More than open house. It's, it's an open hotel. Should we give some credit to Lori? Is she uh, also? Of course. <laughs> There's nothing, nothing grand. For, uh, as someone who, who was there a few times, um, I must say that nothing can run without Lori. You heard about the big Simcha? Of course. They, they have a That's daughter now, you know. Yeah, yeah. Which is amazing. Baruch Hashem. They're all these years, thank God. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. And I'm sure her older brothers are very happy about it. Very, <laughs> I, I ruined their three and three. <laughs> but I heard. That. They're going to have to learn to live with it, <laughs> frankly. It. But no, she's going to be good. She's going to beat them. That's, the, it. that's, that's, that's my goal. That's what's going to end up happening. What's, what, Watch. Amichai, I was told you have an association with Nefesh Benefesh. You actually help people make Aliyah? Um, uh, yeah, I'm actually a lawyer, and right. I'm offering services to people who's making Aliyah. With, I've been working in an American law firm for five years, so now as I open my own firm, I'm offering services to Americans, and especially to people who make Aliyah and need help with, uh, 
with all what a uh, lawyer can help them. Are you aware that hundreds of people are coming this coming week? I'm, I'm so happy for them. And We're going to so be there in Ben Gurion um, Airport to greet everybody. I'm, I'm so happy. And you know, it's going to be amazing. And you should know, Nachum should know that, that not only he is very good at what he does, but honestly, like knowing him, knowing his heart, his heart goes with his work, which is unbelievable. You're not going to find anybody else like that, that he's going to put not his 100%, his heart into the thing. Like if anybody needs anything, whatever it is, he goes out of the way. It's not just, uh, you know, oh, you know, I'm a lawyer. Let me do the, the contract and finish and let's go on. But anybody wants to buy a house, anybody, anything like that, rental property, whatever it is, like he will go in and put in all of his effort. And he's an unbelievable, unbelievable person. Now that you have Dr. Joe's <laughs> reference, business is going to start booming more <laughs> than ever. Are you kidding me? Ami Chai, is there a way for people to contact you from America if they yeah. want to speak to you about Ali issues? Yeah, sure. They can write in Google, Zelser Law Firm or, or um, Zelser Ochedin. And they can dial 972-7722-0, sorry, 972-7722-0022. Simple as that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. Amichai Tadaraba, thank, thank you very you much so for being much. here today. Thank you, you so much. You came all the way from Neir Tzvi? I came all the way from Neir Tzvi for the big here? simcha. Mm -hmm. For the big simcha. And for the Baruch. And for the Speaking of the big simcha, you, Joe, you stay where you are. I'm going to ask Amichai to hand his uh, uh, headphones over to Simon. Because I do want to spend a little bit of time talking about what's happening here right after this radio show. It's a significant event. It's something that the three of us have talked about for months. And finally, 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 we are here together. And I don't think Simon or Joe or myself can believe <laughs> that we are finally, finally here together to celebrate today. Simon, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning Great God. to have you and uh, thank you for all your help and for everything you've done to make this trip such a success for us. No thank yous. <laughs> but no thank yous are allowed, so I'm going to stop that. Um, well, here we are. The, uh, the short version of the story is that Yossi Baumel asked me in January if I knew anybody who might potentially have a safer Torah for the Ethiopian synagogue in Sneirot. And I've had a little bit of a history. Rabbi Siegel could tell you that I thank God I've been blessed and I have a little bit of a history when it comes to Shiduchim with Sifre Torah. And I called Dr. Joe. And you know why we call Dr. Joe? We called him because we need something done. You call Dr. Joe because you know it's going to get done. And uh, he contacted Simon, and he contacted Simon because he knows we need something done. You contact Simon. And Simon went ahead, and as I said earlier, instead of waiting for the big celebration or dedication, he said, let's get the Torah over to Stay Road as soon as possible. And sure enough, today, in memory of three people, one a Kohen, one a Levi, and one a Yisrael, a Sephardic Torah will be presented to the Ethiopian synagogue in Stay, Stay Road. Road. How significant is that entire package to you? Uh, just unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'm, I am so pleased it's worked out this way. I uh, personally knew your dad, Nahum. I also personally knew um, Joe Rosazada's father. Um, incredible people. And to have, a, to have Joe's father, uh, a Kohen, and then to have your father, Nahum, a Levi, and to have my father-in-law, who was also an incredibly great person, um, a real leader, uh, in his generation, um, Norman Trigger, uh, who was a Yisrael, um, also be part of this and uh, to tie them all together, it's just amazing. And uh, what's unique is that the Torah is being given to an Ethiopian synagogue that really didn't have any high quality Torahs and only had one Torah at all. And they, now they at least have two Sifrei Torah when needed. They actually had two Sifrei Torah that were there, one that was totally Pasul that they couldn't use. Um, one that was really um, pasul, but they were using, they were, you know, making, making a go of it. So they really had n not a safer Torah to be able to use. And it was, um, it, it was special. Uh, it was special when we first brought it there. We all decided together that it was going to be tough coordinating the, uh, coordinating the trip. And uh, it would be, why should they be waiting over, you know, over Yom Tovim and uh, over Shabbat, Shabbat not having a safer Torah. So we, you know, we presented to them initially, but we said we're coming back. And ironically, so. and I think Yassi Balmo can confirm this, I think right after it was presented, it was Shabbat Rosh Chodesh, right? Wasn't it like right after that? Yeah, they right needed two Sifrei Torah. They needed two Sifrei Torah immediately, and sure yeah. enough, they were able to use it uh, just a couple of months ago. Uh, and we are here today, and uh, Joe Rosazada, 
How interesting is it that we planned this trip a long time ago and it kept getting postponed because we didn't know when all three of us would be in Israel. We end up planning it for this, for Erev Shabbos Nachamu, with the whole situation in Israel. And everyone, not everyone, but many people said, oh, I guess you're going to now postpone your trip, everything going on in Israel. And the three of us said, are you kidding? This is the time to go. This is the time to really get it, jump into action and make sure we're there for the big celebration. You know, Nachum, I, you know, I'm going to take a few minutes just, sure. just uh, to go over this. You know, like me and Simon, Baruch Hashem, we've been you know, last year we were here for, for you know, for, we went to Safad for like Baomer, and you know, he mentioned all the time, like he reminds me of, of a thing that I said, you know, Nisim and Iflau, like anything that we do in this world or in this, in this war, in this, in this life, it's all Minashamayim, and everything, everything works out, you know, the way Hashem wants it. We could work from here till tomorrow, we could decide, or oh, this is the day that we're going, but Hashem knows, and Hashem directs us to that, to that time of when we really, really need to be here, and when we really need to do. You know, uh, just a quick thing, you know, this, this, this parsha is parsha Vayat Hanan, and you know that Moshe Rabbeinu, our biggest, the biggest Jew, the biggest Navi, the biggest leader in the whole entire world, Daven to Hashem 515 times, as we know, at, at, you know, with the gematria of Art Hanan. 515 times, Nahum. And not, not, Hashem said, no, that's it, no more. Don't daven anymore. This is it. And you're not going, right? And look, look what we can do. Like we, a Pasha de Yid or anybody, a, a Joe, anybody could just buy a ticket and come to Israel. And, and we sometimes say, no, there's, you know, <laughs> the war is going on. Absolutely, you know, like you have to, you have to put that away and just remember that that Moshe Rabbeinu, with all his 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 mitzvahs and everything else, he couldn't come and step foot on on the land, and we mamish could every second we could come in any time we want. It's an unbelievable thing. I, I get emotional every time I think about it. Moshe Rabbeinu couldn't come, and you have a chance, and you Shalom say, oh, no, there's a Gaza rockets or something going the, on. The That's toughest thing we have to 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 do to get to Eretz Yisrael is decide whether we're going to eat meat or fish. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, uh, yes, the price of the ticket, but even a hundred years ago, we're not talking about a thousand years ago, but a hundred years ago, this journey took three months, four months. It was an incredibly arduous journey. We get on a plane in nine and a half hours, right. or ten hours later. Yes, yeah, Simon, Simon alluding to the greatest difficulty we have, what to order on the menu when you get on the plane. Right. Uh, both Simon Jacob and Joe Rosada here, um, we want to send regards back to the entire Jacob family, both in the United States and Israel, because there are plenty of them here in Israel, Baruch Hashem. And of course, to Lori and the entire family back with the boys and your princess uh, yes. in West Orange, New Jersey. If, 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 if again, we'll, we'll, sure. some few, few, few more things I just want to mention. First of all, like, you know, my kids, uh, you know, they were saying, they were telling me, oh, you know, what's going to happen? You know, they have this red alert right. thing that, that oh, every yeah. time they come, the app that comes up. And, you know, like what I, what I told them is well, every time you hear it, you just say Shema if you don't know anything else, anything like that for the Jews that are all around. And I think it's an unbelievable thing that the Baruch they keep doing. And they asked me before I left, you know, David especially and Ike, the my biggest boys asked me, like, you're not nervous, you're not I said, Absolutely not. And they said, you know, could we come? Like, you know, like that's really what they All they right. felt it. Like as a as a little little kids, Baruch Hashem, you know, um, were they scared? Yes, but they they definitely, definitely didn't feel like, oh, you know, like they Baruch Hashem saw the hand of Hashem and everything. So I do want to shout out to David, Ike, Rami, Ruvain, Aaron, and Talia Baruch Hashem and Lori and uh, you guys are special that you know, Baruch Hashem, that, that, you know, we are able to come here. And of course, Mama Golda and how Mama. can I? How, Baruch Hashem, you know. Mama, best <laughs> regards from me. That's it. And Rabin and Sima, of course. You know, Ra Rabin, <laughs> Rabin, who I know at any moment now is going to be joining us. That's for the it. He's going to wow. That's it. That's it. I know he's sure. hiding somewhere in Steros. That's it. And Sipar, with cousin Moshe, for sure, for sure. <laughs> Sippy and David Shimon and Ariella, really, uh, you know, they're all, all davening for our Chayalim. Sippy wrote such a beautiful thing for the Chayalim. I, I'm really proud of her um, that I gave out, or you know, that I, you know, that I gave out Moshe and, and Galia, Yoni, Eli, Nina. Chama and Abby, really, I, I, you know, they're all behind this, and uh, they're unbelievable that they all support this this thing. You need an entire show, show when Joe starts talking about <laughs> that. Like, as simple as that. Uh, and a special hello to Dina Jacob, yeah, because sure. she's an eyewitness to today's big celebration. Dina. It's nice to have a family member here with Rukhashem, you, isn't it? Yeah, and also a shout out to Grandma Doreen, um, and my wife who let me. <laughs> and, and my brother Michael, especially, and his family let me come. So it was a very big deal. So Baruch Hashem. All right, Baruch Hashem is right. We're here to celebrate, and uh, we will give you uh, uh, a, uh, a taste of the Athletes of Safer Torah, certainly with the videos that we'll be posting, and obviously we'll have a report 
uh, about the Achmetz Sefer Torah Monday when we're broadcasting from Yerushalayim right here at JM in the AM. Um, we will be joined next by Rabbi Fendel, and then before we get to Rabbi Yudin, we will uh, have both Rabbi Siegel and Rabbi Sharbat on to discuss the significance of this event uh, uh, today, the Achmetz Sefer Torah here uh, in Steyrot. Um, continue to listen to JM the AM. This is America's one and only Jewish Moments in the Morning Radio program heard on listeners-sponsored WFMU East Orange, WMFU Mount Hope, 